If you're a maker, tinkerer, engineer, or otherwise strange individual, then 3D printers are great. We can all see that. But for normal people, they always want to know, what are you going to use it for? Worry not. Today, I have the answer you need. Hello everyone, Adam here. And today, we're looking at making something with some actual physical value. Something with a real life function. Something that can be seen as having some physical value. And, with a bit of luck, it'll work. A couple of weeks ago, my grandparents were over for dinner and I took the opportunity to see the look on their face when I said I'd printed something in 3D. Once that look had worn off, they were actually quite interested in its practical application. I'd say mainly fixing things that companies would normally charge extortionate amounts of money to do, or for spare parts that normally cost twice as much as the original product. So that's where we're headed with this. Lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, I got a letter from my grandma. The letter reads as follows. Hello Adam, we have a problem. A small piece of plastic holding the pivot of our folding door to the downstairs loo has broken, and I am wondering if I send it to you that perhaps you could make a new one for us please. It is about one and a half inches by half an inch wide with a hole in it for the pin which is in the door. I will send it to you if you think it is possible. I don't understand really what size it is because I have no comprehension of units of scale based on food grains. But, nonetheless, I accepted the challenge. And here it is. The pin and the plastic part in two pieces. And the pin goes in the hole. Like this. So I've got to make one of these. Ideally, I would have liked to seen it in situ so that I can actually maybe adapt the design to make it stronger than it has been before. But on this occasion, that isn't possible. So let's jump into SolidWorks and I'll get this modelled up. I used a pair of cheap Chinese vernier calipers, as everyone owns, to measure the block and made some allowances for the tolerances my printer can achieve. I'll probably print a couple, you know, one or two, and she can use whichever fits the best. For the first print I used nylon because it was the strongest material that I had, supposedly, although I would not used it before. I had no means of helping it stick to the bed so it curled pretty strongly in one corner and was basically useless halfway through the print. I tried again and then it curled in every single corner, so no success there. Next I tried PETG and it was a resounding success. First time print stuck solid, almost hard to remove. I had slightly thin walls and a sparse infill of 12%, so I increased it to three walls, three top and bottom layers for a much more solid result, and I mean you can feel the difference in its weight. So here they are. This is the original and this is the two that I printed in the uh, PETG that actually worked. Dimensionally it seems fine. All the dimensions seems to work, the pin fits and the screw fits. But I have no idea at this point if it will be suitable for its purpose. I think the old material was actually a self-lubricating plastic because you could sort of feel the residue in your hands after a little while. But who cares? Printing something that can replace something else that was digital and then moved to physical, it's just... If you've not experienced that, it's really quite incredible to have something on the screen that's then in your hands. It seems really basic and really like not very exciting, but when it actually happens, it's... It's a bit magic really, a little bit magic, just a bit. It's now time for me to send off this little object to live its serviceable life on a toilet door. If it does last more than a couple of seconds, then I'll leave a comment or a description addition to let you know how that went on. So, now, when asked, what do you need a 3D printer for? Well, the answer is fixing stuff in grandma's house. If they don't believe you, send them to this video and I'll show them what's what. If you don't know what to watch next, try this video on lag, stutter, tearing, G-Sync and FreeSync and why we need those. Variable refresh, te refresh technologies. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been CRT. Yeah.